how was how was everything for you in terms of acting because i spoke to so many different actors and filmmakers who have had so many different things and films delayed and sitting on things so how was it for for you in the last year and a half I mean, I was extremely lucky in the sense that, as you say, for a lot of actors, it was just, you know, there was there was no possibility of working in theatre, that's for sure. So a lot of theatre ended up being on Zoom as well. And again, such a strange medium to go from, oh, we perform in front of people live, but then all of a sudden you're having to do it on a screen and it just completely moves that wonderful um, feeling of being, you know, in a live theatre. But I was really lucky that I actually got to film season five of The Last Kingdom and um, we lived out in Budapest for about eight months. Um, and we lived there for the total time, really. We had a little break over Christmas where we could come back, but because of obviously flying back and forth wasn't really, you know, um, very good in terms of the pandemic, we we just stayed out there the whole time. So we were lucky that we even got to film it and production were amazing to, you know, uh, equip us then with everything that we needed to, to actually get on with the project and finish it, which was really, really lovely. Excellent. Well, that's good that you've been able to work. Yeah, so good because it's been a really tough for, for people within my industry for sure. Um, I mean, but globally, everything has just been so bizarre. And we've all had to find new methods of doing the job that we love to do. So, yeah, it's been strange. Yeah, exactly. And also, you have, uh, well, congratulations on the North Water, which is. Thank you so much. Uh, I've heard lots of good things about it because I think it's already aired in, a, in America, hasn't it? I think it's yes, it has. TV over there. And that's, yeah, I only saw the first episode this morning. It took a while oh, for them to send me some stuff, but I've seen the first episode, which is good. And also, yeah. in the nicest way, anything with Colin Farrell. Oh, don't even get me started. He's <laughs> unbelievable. What an unbelievable <laughs> man. So lovely. It's so strange as well because I used to watch his movies, or oh, watch most of his movies. But obviously, in the noughties, he was in like Daredevil and Phone Booth and stuff. But recently, he's done so much amazing and interesting work that I'm just like I'm in awe of him most of the time in terms of the stuff he's done. So, how was it working with with him? Because I I think he was I, I don't know when this was filmed, but he was pre or post or during when he put on a little bit of weight to play the Penguin in Batman. So, because yes. he looks a little bit bigger in the show. So I presume it was around that, that time. It was the exact time. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm the same as you, Scott. I'm just completely in awe of his like transformational skills. He's yeah, for sure. Yeah. So fantastic. And, you know, I haven't obviously seen Batman yet. Nobody has, but, you know, the sense of him then playing the penguin and him looking nothing like the Colin Farrell that we, we've known from so many other films. Um, but he was absolutely exceptional in the North Water and just such a generous actor, just so kind and just um, so interesting to watch him in his process because he just does all kinds of things to just make each take extremely unique and exciting and so that's really fun as an actor to to watch someone and learn from somebody who absolutely knows what they're doing and their craft has done it for years and yeah you pick up little techniques and skills and they go oh, wow because he does just try all kinds of things and then all of a sudden you've got this amazing three-dimensional dynamic performance and it's gorgeous and I just think he's an unbelievable actor so um, I just felt so honored to be anywhere around him I was like yay <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just him as well I mean you've got Jack O'Connell you've got yes. Stephen Graham I mean it's a pretty and also you're working with Andrew Haig who's made quite yeah. a name for himself in terms of it as a oh, filmmaker gosh. so the whole package was I, I can uh, I guess for you it's just like I have to try and get involved in this absolutely and I mean I was very lucky that I got to work with Colin and Andrew obviously uh, being the director but um I met Jack O'Connell very briefly and was just completely in awe and um, but unfortunately I never got to meet Stephen Graham but I've been watching his work in the North North Water and I just he's one of my absolute favorite actors so unfortunately I didn't get to meet him but just to be even associated with the project that his name is on is like Ooh! So yeah, it was the most amazing experience for sure. And it's such a dark tale as well. And um, I think that's what's so especially surprising about Colin Farrell's character and his storyline is that he plays it so well. And you just think, oh my gosh, what a grotesque person. And the whole tale is just really interesting. And he's he's brilliant. So brilliant. It looked like it was cold as well in some of the... Some it of the kind of they... was. Yeah, it was Budapest. Again, Budapest. So much gets filmed over there. In fact, it was mad. I had a lot of the same um, crew from The Last Kingdom on the North Water. So I turned up to set and I was quite nervous, obviously. And I was like, oh, my gosh, and it's just all my friends. And what was extra lucky about it is that um, there's a wonderful actor called Mark Rowley, who plays Finnan in The Last Kingdom. And he was obviously also in The North Water with me and we played together. Yeah. So we were then completely different from Finnan and Lady Ellsworth. We were then, he was like a 
like a drunken sailor and I was like a local lady of the night let's just say um and you know that was really mad watching us on screen but in completely different characters that was really really fun yeah and what was it that drew you to to Hester in terms of the character because it's a little bit different yeah. to what you've done and people have seen you in The Last Kingdom it's a little bit a little bit different Totally. In fact, Scott, that's my favorite thing, I think, to, about being an actor is that you can just choose to do such different things. And um, at drama school, I was always encouraged to play characters that are so different in terms of this broad spectrum of, of acting. And it was so exciting to delve into shoes that are now completely different to Lady Elswith's. Um, and somebody young, somebody, um, yes, a little bit dark, but at the same time, you know, so different from playing this kind of um, grandmother with gravitas that I play on The Last Kingdom. Um, and now somebody who's, you know, quite, um, you know, scary and a little bit, uh, yeah, just fun and a bit more rough around the edges. Was quite quite awesome yeah, absolutely well. and so yeah. i mean for you as an actress i mean you obviously you've done the last kingdom which is a big show this is obviously going to be a big show i can i can imagine are you enjoying doing what you're doing at the moment because i can imagine the last couple of years, last year has been as you said you know it's been a bit tough for everybody in industry absolutely I, I just keep counting my blessings really because i've got so many wonderful friends who are just amazing actors and to see opportunities fall through or to see things not go to plan because of the pandemic has been such a shame so I, i've i've been enjoying it so much in the sense that i just know how, how lucky i've been really and it's it's been really lovely to get back into the family of the last kingdom because you know the show i, I started the show at the end of 2014 and I was 21 years old and now I'm 28 so I've done it for seven years of my life which I just think is crazy um and amazing and so with that you know we built up such a big family and that's the crew and the cast and the the production everything um so to go back and do that during a pandemic where you know it was just so tough for for so many people, I just felt, felt, you know, wow, I'm definitely very lucky here. Um, and then what's extra fun is that when I came back from Budapest, um, I actually landed my first ever professional theatre job, um, which I'm currently in right now. So it's all been a bit woo, um, uh, which is called The Windsor's Endgame uh, in Piccadilly Circus. So that's been really, really fun. And again, it's completely different from Lady Ellsworth because it's a comedy. It's about the, the modern royal family, but it's super hilarious ridiculous um and again uses skills that i haven't been able to apply to lady elswith but have have you know got these skills deep down and now i've been able to use them that's theater skills comedy skills you know lots of things that i haven't had to um yeah portray for a while so now it's been really really fun to do that i love that it's called and it's got end game in the title that yeah it <laughs> comes on seats <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> this, that, that's the one with harry enfield right harry enfield is yes is yeah. yes harry enfield plays prince charles and it's based on the channel four comedy the windsors so um there's some of the original cast so it's a remarkable harry enfield um and we've also got like tom durant pritchard who's playing prince harry he plays him in the tv show as well um and uh you know tim wallers who plays prince andrew and matthew cottle who plays Prince Edward but then then the rest of the cast are all different and so we're all like bringing something a bit crazy and cool to the show so that's been really really fun. Awesome and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about The Last Kingdom before I ask you about about season five which is as far as I'm aware the final the final season of, of the show how long into the process did you guys get a sense of how big it was because I, I knew it was a big show, but then seeing when you've been to conventions and seeing, you know, online and everything else, there was such a feverish, massive fan base for this show. How long into the show did you guys get a sense of, oh my God, this is, this is, this is quite big. <laughs> that is such a good question, Scott, because I don't, I did not feel that in season one and two at all. Like I, <laughs> you know, I always knew it was an amazing show, like the actors in The Last Kingdom and are just out of this world. Um, the way it was filmed was absolutely stunning the storyline so interesting I always knew that it was a really quality piece of work and that it was so special but I feel like it didn't really gain the audience we maybe thought it would from the beginning until I think season four funnily enough during the pandemic where um season four launched in like the sort of spring of 2020 yes it would have been the spring and it just boomed and we were all like what and all of a sudden the fan base of the whole show just grew like crazy and I think potentially it's because a lot of, of 
people love shows like Game of Thrones, for instance. And obviously when Game of Thrones ended, a lot of people then had like a bit of a void um, and probably thought, oh, what shows are of this kind of genre-ish? And I know ours is not technically the same genre because it's not fantasy, it's more historical, but um, it's of that ilk in terms of that really wonderful escapism and you get to see the battles and kings and queens and all this kind of stuff. So I feel like a lot of people then gravitated towards Last Kingdom thought oh, I'll give this a go and then we're like really pleasantly surprised to find that it is such a gem and I think there's something quite sweet about that because we're more of an underrated show which I think is really good because then when people stumble upon it and then commit to it they're actually like wow this is mind-blowing and I think because the characters are so phenomenal and everything is has been written in such a beautiful three-dimensional way that you can't not fall in love with the characters you can't not get invested with their storylines um and yeah and the acting is just so phenomenal and so I feel like it was season four funnily enough where we were like okay we've made it finally we've arrived in the room (laughs) really funny (laughs) Well, I think for, I think some I think we spoke to you for season three, not me personally, but someone from the yeah, website yeah. spoke to you for season three. And when we looked at the the kind of the view count of how of people going to watch the interviews, it was more than you know Tom Hanks and Will, you know, all these amazing oh. amazing A list celebrities. Yeah. You think, oh yeah, definitely get people, and then it's you get you know getting emails saying, oh, but Last Kingdom's still like Yay. The most watched videos amazing. on our site. So there you go. Oh. That's fantastic. Um, obviously, you've got season five coming out now. You got, you can't say too much, and obviously, we don't want to spoil it for people. But how 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 were you pleased, and were you excited by how it was going to finish? Because obviously, all good things come to an end at some point. But it must have been bittersweet knowing it was fin- finishing. But did you get a sense when you read the scripts that this is the the right way to to go out, as it were? Absolutely. I mean, the writers are just phenomenal we've had a couple of the writers from season one all the way up until season five so they really know our characters inside and out um and obviously with the end of anything it feels like things have to be closed or things have to be wrapped up but I think within the season it doesn't really feel like that in a in a sort of okay here we are now we're done it's it's not like that at all I think it still leaves room for for you know the imagination of the audience and it's it's just it really goes on a journey, I think, of family, if we were to think of like a theme of the show. And that's um, how I meant in the sense that it's so character driven that you end up just loving characters and really, really caring about them. And especially I think in this season, because it's all about family. So Uhtred obviously is our protagonist, um, phenomenal Alexander Trayman. And um, he, his sort of whole storyline is is about how he's dealing with his children. They've, they've grown up now. So season five kind of moves on a little bit from the end of season four. Um, and they're very much then independent people and they want their own things. And that's extremely differing to what he wants and his motivations and then the same thing goes for me so not only am I a mother in this season but I'm also a grandmother which you know and I was a grandmother in season four as well but now my grandkids are like this (laughs) Um, um, it's amazing obviously and it's the same with with my family in terms of Ethel Fled and uh, King Edward are my children and they've got their own children and all of us are dealing generationally with trying to control or persuade or uh, look after protect these people that we love but at the same time there's so much anguish and there's so much um, sort of turmoil with with what people want and especially with King Edward because he is now the ruler and no one can tell him what for Where, whereas our dynamic and relationship back in the day was that I was still more superior because I was older and I'm you know sort of um, more versed in how to to be you know uh, a leader back in that day or at least you know I, I was watching King Alfred be a leader but now in this particular season King Edward's he's like no I'm running the the roots don't even try and tell me what to do so it's really interesting to see then all the power dynamics between people and of course there's battles and there's love and there's lust and there's you know all the wonderful things that we want to see but at the heart of it I feel like the theme is truly about family and watching those families break and seeing how they might come back together and it's it's really moving actually I think it's it's going to really tug at people's heartstrings and it's a really really special season really special yeah, yeah. exciting yeah. as a final question then how much are you going to miss elsewhere because obviously you spent five years with uh, many episodes you've you know spanned lots of lots of time with uh, how much are you gonna are you gonna miss playing her 
oh, Scott, I'm going to miss her so much. I think it's mainly because she's such an interesting character because obviously at the beginning of the show, I was playing her the way she's sort of written in the books that she is this very pious, very severe you know, woman, extremely intelligent, but she's not necessarily the warmest, most empathetic person, but extremely wise. So that was really, really cool because I was only 21 when I began playing her. So I was, you know, that's the sort of road I went down. And then the more... Although at the end of season one, there's a lovely moment where we see her with baby Edward in the marshes where it looks like he's dying. That's that that was nice that they put that in season one, because it again showed that she does have a heart. She is a mother. Actually, everything she's doing is only out of the sense of duty and loyalty to, you know, not only her husband, King Alfred, but what is his mission of creating this united land of England or whatever. So, so that was really nice. But then as the seasons have gone on, yes, she's still so sassy and fierce. And it's so funny because I'm not really that. I'm really like goofy, like, woo. you know, I'm, I would never say the kind of stuff that Lady Elsa would say. I do not have the balls to do what she does. And yet I get to then play that. So there's something lovely about me as an actor getting to delve into those shoes and go oh wow I, I can be a bit of that then today I can I can use those things that are deep down within me as Eliza that I would never dream of doing or whatever and then getting to use that with this character so that that I will miss dearly and also I feel like as the seasons have gone on she's become a bit warmer in season four she was sort of redeemed in a way for a lot of her mistakes and was able to sort of apologize for all her for her wrongdoings um and so in season five now we really see that and in fact I feel like she becomes quite a heroic figure so obviously that that's up to the audience to judge but in the sense of how how different I am playing her from the beginning I feel like she's now come into her own and she really is she's now just out out to help and that's really really lovely to see so I'll miss her especially as she's she's getting much nicer it's like no (laughs) she's getting nicer at the end (laughs) it's too Uh, late (laughs) <laughs> yeah absolutely good well we look forward to it we look forward to, to thank, you so uh, thank you so so much for your time today really appreciate thank it for having me. thank you so and, much uh, yeah good luck with both the shows i hope they go well for you thank you so much scott right. have a lovely half of your day you have thank a good you. weekend bye-bye thank you bye ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.